Welcome back. In video two of our comps quick lesson, we're going to talk about the input page. We actually started backwards. We talked about the output page in our last video, which is the page you see here, where we identify all the operating metrics of the peer group, all the multiples of the peer group, and compare that to our target company. Well, now we're going to turn to the input page where we actually have to input all the data that enables us to get that output page. So this is a, a fairly common representation of a, this is a fairly common comps model, if you will. You have room, it's sort of organized vertically is the typical structure. You have room on top for 10 or more comps. The amount of comps that you want to put in, you just go ahead and input. And I'm just going to walk through the layout right now. This is a, a simple comps model at points where I think it's important to sort of understand where it could get a little bit trickier. I'm going to lay that out and I'm going to provide you guys with this template so you can go and, and try to input comps on your own. Like I, like I said in the first video, this is probably the most common um, and to some extent the simplest investment banking type model that you're, you're going to build. So I'm going to focus on just one of these comps because I think when you sort of know how to build one, you sort of know how to build all of them. So let's focus on Netgear. So the first section of the comps model template, input model template is inputting market data. So Netgear's ticker, the date of its latest filing, the date of its latest fiscal year end. So as of the um, recording of this video, the latest filing was April 2012. The latest fiscal year end was December 2011. So their fiscal year end happens to coincide with their calendar year end. Notice that that's actually different from that's not the case for all companies. For example, Extreme has a July fiscal year end and Brocade has a October fiscal year end. We input Netgear's share price and the share price date. OK, the date of the analysis, which is taking place on June 27, 2012. And, and I'll add w one thing that I sort of just touched on a second ago, but I think it actually bears a little bit more elaboration, which is when you have non-calendar fiscal year ends, that creates a challenge in terms of the standardization of the multiples. If your revenues, for example, on a fiscal year end are not aligned with the revenues of the other companies, then that creates a challenge and we have to make sure that that's apples to apples. And that's what we're going to talk about as we go down the inputs page. It's one of the challenges of comps model. So if you scroll down, you get to uh, shares data. And this is an area where certainly we've, we've simplified it in this template for you. Basically, what we see here is the current basic share count, which for Netgear and every, but any, any company you can find on the front cover of the latest filing. In this case, it was their April 1st 10Q. And this will include their latest basic share count. But to actually get to the fully diluted share count, you're going to need to add Dilute, potentially dilutive securities. The most common ones are exercisable options and any potentially new shares from the conversion of convertible debt or convertible preferred stock. There are a couple of other nuances in here. This is a simplification. How do you actually quantify what the net shares are from exercisable options? How do you actually determine whether there are going to be any shares from convertible securities? There are schedules that are a little bit more advanced that we go over in our financial modeling, specifically our premium package financial modeling program at www.wallstreetprep.com. Those of you who are want you who want to get their their hands dirty with actually going through a full investment banking grade model comps model encouraged to go through that. One other nuance here that we sort of simplified is stock splits and various corporate actions. We don't actually reflect any corporate actions in here. So we're assuming that there wasn't for example, a stock split in the middle of the period that would affect the number of shares that are actually outstanding. So let's move on. And below the market share and diluted share count data, we actually have, I'm going to zoom in a little bit so you can see it more clearly. So when you start putting in the financials for your comp. So for next year, you go to the latest 10K. This is the last fiscal year data and you input financials. Okay, and we have revenues all the way down to net income and diluted EPS. Diluted EPS is typically the, the EPS figure that we want as opposed to basic EPS. As well as some other data, we always want to identify EBITDA. And so in order to get EBITDA, we take EBIT and add DNA. Probably the biggest simplification in this model that, that everyone should be aware of is non-recurring items 
and normalized earnings. So whenever we input comps, we want to make sure that the data is not that we're not simply mindlessly doing data entry from the 10 Qs. So whatever the, the, the 10 Q says for revenue, whatever the Q says for cost of goods sold, we put that in. But we, we want to be sure that we do a good amount of diligence and look at the footnotes, look at the press releases, look at the research to just confirm that the historical the historical data ha is cleaned up for non-recurring items to really get a clean EBIT figure, to get a clean EPS figure, to get a clean EBITDA figure. And that, that usually takes the form of excluding things like restructuring charges, stock-based compensation expense, certain intangible assets, certain write-downs, write-ups. We go over this in great detail in our course and go through full real case studies. For the purposes of this quick lesson, we're going to go through the, the, the process of just putting in Netgear's actual filings and keeping in the back of our minds that these numbers tend to get slightly adjusted when you exclude certain non-recurring and non-relevant items for the purposes of calculating multiples. Okay, now that we finished inputting the last fiscal year, we turn to inputting the latest quarters after the fiscal year. So for net year, there was a quarter after the latest fiscal year. And so we're going to put that in and you're going to see why in a moment. And we're going to do the same thing for the latest, however many quarters there were in the prior year. Why are we doing that? So let's just make sure we get the numbers right. So the latest filing was the Q1 2012, right? April, first 2012 it's the first quarter of 2012 the last full year was December 31st 2011 there's been one quarter since since the company filed its full full annuals so what we want is that quarter right that last that that basically the last quarter that ended in April 2012 but in but ultimately our goal is to get the last 12 months data so if we simply take the last fiscal year plus the latest quarter after the fiscal year, we have five quarters worth of data. We want to subtract from that, and that's what this next section is about. The latest, whatever that latest quarter was, whether it was whether there was only one quarter the way it was for net year, two quarters or three quarters, depending on whatever the current date is, you want to subtract, you want to go back to the prior year and subtract that quarter or quarters from the accumulated quarters that you'll be adding up to get to the last 12 months data. So that ultimately your out your your net result is going to be re LTM revenue, which are going to be calculated as last fiscal year, plus all the quarters since that fiscal year, minus the prior years, in this case, first quarter, to get you that last 12 months data. And that and that's the case for EBITDA, EBIT, and EPS. So once we have that in place, we can really begin putting the finishing touches on the input. I mean, that, that's sort of the heavy lifting for the input section. And the rest is just sort of laying out just visually things that we've already done. So we see the last 12 months looks like uh, Netgear has got 1.2 billion in revenue generated. The If you just look at the last fiscal year, it was 1.1 billion. Now in terms of forecasts, and this is sort of the next area where it can, where it can get a little bit tricky. So in terms of forecasting, most, most of the time you can actually get research estimates where sell side equity research analysts provide their not just their fiscal year revenue EBITDA EBIT and EPS estimates but they also provide calendar year estimates and, and that was certainly the case here and so we just hard-coded this we, we downloaded it from um, the uh, ca from Capital IQ and from some equity research reports which we're going to provide for you guys as part of the uh, in addition to the template but basically you get the you get the forecast from a consensus forecast from analysts. The challenge is if you don't have calendar year data, that analysts are only reporting fiscal year data and you have an off calendar year company, in which case you have to do some calendarization. And that's a little beyond the scope of, of this uh, simple lesson, but we cover in great detail in our financial modeling course. So in terms of calendarization, we simply go to the uh, the research and the estimates that are provided by the sell side research analyst and we lay out their estimates for the next year's forecast for revenue EBITDA EBIT and EPS and the same for the year two forecast as well as the long-term growth rate. The last input that we need is some balance sheet data in order to actually arrive at enterprise value. We have market cap which is simply share price times diluted shares outstanding 
But to get from market cap to enterprise value, we need to identify, we need to go to the latest Q, which is we mentioned for neck year, it was the um, it was the 10 Q, it was the 10 Q, the first quarter 10 Q. And we lay out any debt, debt equivalents and any cash to calculate net debt. This is, by the way, having negative net debt is not something that is uncommon, especially for companies that are at the early stage or are very cash rich. And so rather than having a lot of debt on their books, they have a lot of cash. And so you'll see companies that actually have a negative net debt position. That is not uncommon and we see that quite often. But that essentially is all of the data entry. And at this point we have all the raw material to create the multiples that we lay out here below that are ultimately pulled into this output slide. So that's essentially the, the, comps, the comps analysis. And that's how you do a training comps analysis. In our courses, we spend a lot of time just trying to get into the, some, some of the more advanced nuances of this as well as related comps analyses like transaction comps, etc. Hope you enjoyed this quick lesson and we'll catch up on the next one.